so here we have uh, two fired individuals. We have uh, Chris Cuomo, who used his influence as a quote-unquote journalist to attack the uh, accusers of his former governor of New York, Andrew Coleman, um, accusers of sexual harassment and whatnot. He uses his little influence and power to go after her and try to embarrass her. And we have Jamel Hill, who also was fired from Disney, a.k.a. ESPN, because she went against the company policy knowingly twice after they gave her a little um, hand spanking. She still did it again and had to fire her ass. But for whatever reason, these two liberals decided to talk about gun control, and we're going to break down their conversation and deal with all the bullshit with gun control. We know we can do better. You know, it's it's not like this is the human condition. <laughs> you know, I mean, we've done this. But I wanted to have a conversation with this guy, and I wanted to hear him say exactly what he said, which is, no, none of these ideas are on the table. Um, maybe giving people more resources for uh, helping with mental health, um, but I'm not going to take away their ability to get a weapon. Huh. And I said, so where is the conversation then? We're like, where, where is the start? And he says, you can't come at me dogmatically and say your way is killing people. Your way is uh, too many guns. Uh, we need to get rid of guns. If you come at me that way, I will never take a step away from my base because I'm safe there. And you are trying to destroy me. But if you give me a win in this. So I said, so here's your win. I said, your win is red flag laws. You voted against it. He goes, yeah, because you've got the process twisted. I said, how? You could put me in a hospital for 96 hours before I get to go to a hearing about whether I'm a danger to myself or others. He says, yeah, but here you're taking away. There's a taking. I said, you're putting me in a hospital. He says, well, yeah, I don't really like that either. I said, so you think that when they find me digging into my arms with a piece of glass in my bathtub, we should go to court first before they send me to the hospital. And he says, well, there's an obvious health emergency there. I said, but there would have to be a show of one also why they took the guns. And the... T mm, not really. That's not how it works. All they have to do is come to a house in a dispute situation. All it has to be is he say, she say. All it has to be is a neighbor who don't like you. Um, posting on your guns on social media and they see you in the backyard cleaning the guns, whatever. It don't have to be this pertinent, very undebatable um, situation. It can literally be he say, she said. And some dickhead cop is going to come to your house and just do whatever. I have a co-worker who's in law enforcement who baby mom accused him of doing something, white boy. And he's on firearm restriction and he'll probably never get off, which he'll probably lose his job because you need to be able to carry firearms and go on trips. Um... But basically, it was an allegation. He beat the case. Child checked the custody, said he's clear. Yet, the loophole he has to go to to get his name cleared back to get his gun. And this is not a personal pistol permit, but this is his permit from using his badge to get a gun. But he can't have his other regular rifles, too, either. But all it took was an accusation of his baby mom. And there's an investigation. And obviously, law enforcement takes that shit seriously, which they should. It's a higher level of scrutiny than in the public. However, getting out of that situation is damn near impossible almost. To literally have the judge call your caseworker, call your public defender, that's what he used. They're not returning his calls. He, he's in a limbo, weird space. But all it took was an allegation from his child's mother. Even though she's probably doing more to the kids and putting them in harm's way and being a little thought buck, whatever. He got accused of that, and that's all it took. So it's not this taking thing he's saying is too much because their side is no taking so that's why we are where we are because one side says we must take well here's what i would say and, I, and i'm familiar with byron donalds i don't know him i've never met him but i've just seen um you know I've, I've read some things about him have seen some of the interviews that he's done with other people and you know it, it, kind of what he told you is like the exact problem with with politics is that everything that would be better for our society is considered a loss for somebody else. And that, mm -hmm. they're very good at framing it that way. And I would say to some degree, both sides do that. Like they're very good at framing it that way. Like you lose if you give up and um, if you give up anything. And I consider people like that to be really unserious because to me, you're a coward. Like you're a coward. Like as simple as that, you're an elected coward. Like your, ba your job is to make, technically your job is to make things better for the people that you serve. That is, you know, a very basic definition of what that is. And so what you're telling me is that your selfish desires to stay in politics supersede what is better than the goal of the job that you have. But what do you do when 
he's gonna say it, but his constituents support. He's in Florida, okay. His constituents support his ideas around the Second Amendment and guns. Florida ain't trying to do red flat laws. They're not trying to do Tim Round magazine. They're not none of that stuff that doesn't make things better or save lives. It's just a person could do the same amount of damage with the Tim Round mag. They could do it with a thirty, and even the ones that have ten, all you do is change the spring, and now it's thirty rounds. But these gun control things that happen in New York, Massachusetts, Connecticut, all over the East Coast. The red states don't want that shit. That's why Stacey Abrams didn't win. Despite a bunch of black gun owners rolling for her. But she called him a coward because he admitted that that's not a winning issue. I mean, part of being in politics is to win and have power. Like, don't get it twisted. They're all a little narcissistic for where we overuse as it is. But that is part of the point. But he's not a coward because his constituents want that, which he's about to say. But I wonder, what she called the Democrats, who are blue dog Democrats, who are in a red state and they know they can't win if they're talking all this gun control shit. And when they do vote on an issue, they vote typically with the Republican candidate, uh, president or whatever. Like, what was that? Uh, the dude that they claimed that black women saved Alabama or whatever, that guy. He voted 70% with Donald Trump. <laughs> that was y'all king y'all saved the day by getting a, a blue dog democrat in a red state which we all know who understand politics and all that he has to do that because he's in a red state but nonetheless y'all gave him black women credit for him but he only voted 30% of the time for things that are in y'all interest okay cool but he's not a coward because he wants to vote in the way his constituents want but I'm, I'm just curious what she called the democrats who are who get money from the NRA or Democrats who are in red states who can't come out talking reckless like this. They can't support any bills like that unless there's overwhelming support and they got top down leadership and they got a bunch of Supreme Court justices that are on their team too. Unless they get all that, they're not going to publicly say any of the stuff that their colleagues would say. But would she call them cowards too? Because clearly there are Democrats who lost their elections. When the 94 crime bill came out, I mean, not crime bill, my bad, that's about Biden. When, yeah, that was a part of the crime bill, actually. The assault weapons ban was a part of it. But, um, there were a lot of Democrats who lost their seats when that happened. And they changed Congress forever. Republicans finally got power after that. Um, but, would you call them cowards? The loss they took for 10, 20 years, like, they had a 40-year reign of having the House and the Senate. And that was part of the reason why they lost it, was because they did the ban. Would you call them cowards for recognizing, oh shit, these the American people didn't like that, and I could lose if I do that. I'm just curious, would she call them cowards too? You people who put you there say that's what they want. Where he is, they want to be armed to the teeth for when you come for them. Damn, commercial. <laughs> <laughs> right, but that's what's so funny about it. It's like <laughs> that which is why the logic doesn't compute. And I, I really love I would the comments that she's about to say is a logic that doesn't compute because this is the typical argument from the left. You've heard Bill Maher say it. You've heard others say the same stupid thing that you can't be the bigger, stronger government. Blah, blah, blah. They're going to destroy you with F-16. Even Joe Biden just said it. They got F-16s and all this other shit they're going to come at you with. Um, Which we know is all malarkey. I want to have a conversation with some of them and say, hey, hey, look, I hear you. Get your AR-15s and all that. What is that going to do if a plane comes through and drops a bomb on your ass? Do you think you're going to shoot at it? Like, too many of them have seen Red Dawn. And I'm like, that shit ain't happening in real life. Like, weapons are too sophisticated. They got drones, dog. They don't even have to come to your fort or whatever village you built that you think is going to sustain you from government tyranny. They will just blow your ass up from somebody's office and it's over. So, like, I don't even know where y'all got it in y'all mind that y'all can fight them back. And and maybe... This um, Vietnam, Afghanistan, um, the Native Americans talk. America, guerrilla warfare, where a bigger and more powerful army can get overtaken. One, the, the stupid ass liberals who make this argument ignore the fact that these are military men and women who have to do this, right? So they have to fire on American citizens. They're practically sometimes their own family members, right? A lot of them are going to do that. If how many thousands of men and women left the military over getting a vaccination, right? They, they got kicked out the military because they wouldn't get the vaccine. A group of people who are slaves to the state, like you work for the government, they own your body, you are their equipment. They inject you with all types of crazy shit that's going to mess you up eventually some, at some point in your life. But that one vaccine is like, no, nah, we don't want that. And they left. So you mean to tell me you don't think that there's going to be some type of issue within the government? That's the whole point of the Second Amendment and the threat is that 
no people don't think they're going to win overthrow the government no they don't think that they have a chance to win but it's the threat of it's going to be a bloodbath we're going to lose a lot of people's lives it's going to destroy the country as a nation it, all the people who were on the fence and didn't want to do nothing and went and bust a grip in the food fight when they see other American citizens, citizens getting bombed on and getting shot at and things of that nature they're going to react absolutely the whole premise of it is a threat a reminder like yo if America didn't have the second amendment what Australia did with COVID-19 and the concentration camps you think all these liberals on TV all these pundits and people who were shaming people who didn't want the vaccine now that we know didn't stop emissions I mean they didn't stop um, passing it on they didn't stop you from getting it <laughs> and then there's this problem with this thing that everybody keeps getting that little young healthy athletes just passing out everywhere but we don't know if they got it or not or if that's any correlation to that but we just see a high number of healthy young athletic men and women of all races just passing out for no reason yeah but um if liberals had their way if democrats had their way progressives had their way during the pandemic they would have done the exact same thing we are the vaccine passports the countries that have no second amendment that or, or have a limited one did a lot of shit that they could just could not do in america the best they could do is say you can't work which was messed up because you know whatever but thank god for the constitution and the supreme court they said that that shit was unconstitutional and all those people got to get their jobs back and they got some money back from being uh incorrectly fired but anyways that's just the point though i just hate that they minimize it to even joe biden we got f-16s we got planes you got you got black water groups you got private militia people who got the same technology even better technology and weapons that the military can't use because of there's rules and regulations like these are the people that the government calls in when they don't want to get in trouble or they don't want to be seen they call these people those people exist in this country being all that said is like we saw what happened in vietnam people said that was old whatever but it was a war of terrain yes that was the advantage of terrain same thing with afghanistan in the mountains these dudes got ak's with no sights and they tend to do well against the more powerful bigger stronger american army but there's a thing called guerrilla warfare you don't take on a bigger more powerful government than you head on that's not how that works yes there are people in that same government in that same military that would not shoot or fire on other Americans. it's not something i would depend on but i'm saying there are those folks who wouldn't do it right and then there are people in this country who have the same capabilities the same drones the same emps same full metal armored truck systems that the government has there are individuals who have them as well too so it'll be a bloodbath it will be ugly it'll be devastating it will destroy the country absolutely but that's the threat the possibility why we the government is chill before they go do something so i don't know i just i hate when they make this argument because it's like they act like they don't study history and look at how many smaller weaker governments over people rebels with them nice ass Toyota trucks that america gives to them <laughs> and the automatic weapons the actual automatic weapons of war not the semi-automatic weapons that we have here but they go over there and they have a nice ass toyotas in the desert that are clean look like they brand new every year there's something going on it look like they got the newer versions like they did test dummies for them shits and they got nice ass new weapons that we jump off in this little supply box like in call of duty and they get all the guns and they overthrow that government without the power or the technology to do so just tactics and numbers which how big is america's military how many guns are there in america I can, let's just say there's five million americans that are with the shits and trained and know what they're doing and our former military or former former government agency people it is what it is and, and oh yeah don't forget that there aren't other countries that would have a vested interest in that situation happening that would also do what we do to other countries to help the scales get tipped up okay let's not go down that rabbit hole but let's carry on with the bullshit this is a better job that people who are more progressive and, and left-leaning can do. It's like, and, and even when I've talked about gun control, my control, it's not about, and, and maybe control is the wrong word, because people in our country, we hear control and we just lose it. Um, it's just about being sensible. My husband's a gun, gun owner. He has. It's always convenient that the anti-gunner, the one gun control person, always knows somebody. Stacey Abrams, my grandfather, your yeah, grandfather got a fucking single shot rifle and some shotguns. Like, he does not have what, we, what you want to take away from us. Okay, Cedric Benson's on the Breakfast Club. I want the what's that shotgun? That what's that pistol that shoots shotgun shells? The most ineffective, stupid gun weapon to have 
in a home defense situation. He's bragging about wanting to buy or own it, claiming he owns, which I doubt he does. But I mean, nonetheless, these are wealthy elite people who have access to security and details and all that other stuff. Or when the police is called or, you know, they will come to their residence because they're an elected official or they're a millionaire ex-journalist on TV. They have access to stuff that the regular people don't have. We all know that a gun is way quicker than a 911 call response to have when something pops off in your um in your situation. This is weapon. We see it every day. And it's fun. They never talk about they never show you these clips of news when the nine year old goes to his parents' closet, knows where the gun is at, and they shoot the intruder. And they live and the intruder goes in the body back. They never show you they'll show you the other result when the person has no guns. They'll show you when the family's raped and killed and beat up and all that. What was that? One of the chicks from Life Jennings songs in Jersey. The house got raided, everybody got killed, the woman, the kids and all that. They'll show you those stories, but they never show you stories that happen every day. People use their guns in a Second Amendment situation or a defense situation, and they prevail. Is how many times is this 70, 80 year old person living by herself a uh, quote unquote easy target? But they got that Smith and Wesson. They got that shotgun. They know how to use it, and they pop the intruder and they kill them, or they subdue them enough for law enforcement to get there. They never talk about those stories. A woman got raped on the bus on a train in New York City, and people all watched, and nobody did shit about it. Right, but then they were want, want to make laws more difficult for people to have the ability to defend themselves. We got guns all over our house. All right? I think that's bullshit. And most of the people that I know that are like him, and and let's be clear, there's a very different gun conversation in Black America versus White America. Very bullshit. different. Okay, um, and when it comes to gun ownership, these are two different things because the Black people are scared of the white people. I don't know no Black people that's running around scared of the white people. Which is, you know, because they see shit like the Capitol and the insurrection. There were no guns at the Capitol. There were no guns at the Capitol. If white boys want to overthrow government, as you saw when the government, the land grabbing government agency came to take their land from the white boys, they were armed to the teeth and they were ready for the shits. When white boys want to overthrow government, they know how to do it and they have the actual arsenal and weaponry to do it. So... I don't understand how you use that as the example when that literally there were no guns there other than the Capitol Police. And they see how, like, you know, especially during the age of the Trump tox toxicity, which we're still in, that all these white people are arming up, saying they're afraid of us. They're like, I'll be damned if I'm in a supermarket and something unfortunate and devastating like what happened in Buffalo happens. That's what that's why a lot of the black people are. No, that's not why. That's absolutely not. The same black folks are after that happened are calling for more gun controls. <laughs> than before some of them are starting up and going to get guns and arming up whatever but it's not due to the tiki torch white boy coming to the town near you to shoot everybody up and even if you examine that situation which the liberals never do he specifically googled an area that had high black population a perceived low gun um access and he said i'm gonna go there because even if they have guns because of new york's bullshit trash laws they only gonna have 10 round magazines they're going to have these stupid modifications done to them to make the gun somewhat ineffective. They're probably not going to be carrying their guns loaded like if it was in Texas or anywhere else where if he did that, like 20 other people would have pulled out in that parking lot and shot his ass from their, with their truck gun, their 300 blackout, 10-inch paws, with the, you know what I mean, is ready. He knows that that's not going to happen in New York so, or in a black city in a, a New York State. They don't talk about that part either, remember that. They don't talk about his manifesto when he researched specifically. Let's go to a place with shitty gun laws where, and where a bunch of black people at and a bunch of older people who probably ain't gonna have guns either. The m most, um, the place I could find the most victims and soft target I could, I could find next to a school. Let me go find that and go do that there. I'm not gonna go to the suburbs or anywhere else. But his shit was mo racially motivated, obviously, that's why. But I'm saying, he's not going to go nowhere else where he knows there are people who are going to have a reaction. Now, there's another tops in a worse part of town that if he did that, maybe Pookies and Rebbies and them would have responded. Maybe because that area is a little bit more violent than that one. But and this is, I'm from here, so I know what I'm talking about. But I'm saying, he specifically went to one where there's a higher, older population that lived directly around that store. Are arming up and if you look 
But, again, this is another one of the dumbass liberals' argument from black people is we're getting guns because of Tiki Torch, white boys, blah, blah, blah. No, that's not the case. We're getting guns because Pookie and Ray Ray and them, because how many black women they say go missing a year and they never find them and the news don't talk about them? They're getting guns for their self-protection because of most of them, if you look at all these new gun tuber females that have a million views and they're not a shoot and do shit, but their girls, is they were in domestic s dispute situations. That young lady who lost her life, God forbid, um, this past summer because her felon baby daddy that she chose to be with, husband rather, he um, shot her with a shotgun. Um, she couldn't go get herself a gun because of New York. Now, the, in Niagara County, if you're in a d dispute, uh, domestic violence situation, they expedite it. So they just look out for the women in those situations in that county, which is right, right across the tra train track. But in New York, it's not like that, especially in Buffalo. That's the longest it's going to take you to get a gun is in Buffalo, in the city of Buffalo, in every county. Other municipalities are different, like it's six months, it's seven months, whatever. But the predominantly black county, it, it takes the longest to get your guns back. Thank you, Democrats. <clears throat> but point still taken, black gun ownership has not gone up specifically from black women who are late to the party because everybody's got guns who want them. It's not because of TQ towards white boys. It's because of proximity the rape the molestation the robberies you see the videos all the time strippers be coming back from the, from stripping them dudes in Atlanta they be getting them um chicks there was even a segment on Roland Martin that I've discussed in my other video I don't trust black people who push gun control black woman was on there he tried to do the same thing oh why is y'all getting guns now all of a sudden blah 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 that's the only time they talk about gun ownership is when they can frame it around race only time. Any other time they're talking about gun control. Any other time they're like, oh, the police don't want to try to have these guns. So now they're pro-police on this one issue. And that's it. But he tried to frame it as Tiki Torch White Boys. He's like, no, I work in the hood at night. I go to people's houses at night. And my husband didn't want me doing that without having a strap. Because nine times out of ten, if somebody robbed me, we're at my purse. Or if I go to a house to do some counseling or some whatever she did, social work, that black husband or boyfriend or whoever don't want me doing what I'm doing or I'm about to take their kids from or whatever that's gonna be my issue that's why I got this gun not because of Chief George White Boys stop framing it that way because that's not the reality the reality is nine times out of ten if you're a black gun owner and you live in the hood if you have to use your gun to defend yourself it's gonna be somebody like you not a Chief George White Boy statistically the number one group that's arming up is black women because they're late to the party all right and so there's those are two different kind of conversations but, you know, it, I don't really see if you consider yourself to be a legitimate, serious, I ain't trying to hurt nobody gun owner. I don't understand. Is it really that much to ask you to wait like another 48 hours to buy what you're going to purchase? The bad guy. Yes, I shouldn't have to wait. If I pass my background check, if this, the FBI must my name, I have no red flags, pun intended, I should be able to get my gun right then and there. Or my county is different. I got to go do this, do that. Uh, send some information to my county the county goes back and sends the information back to my gun store to FFL and then I can walk away now if I do that on close to a weekend if I do that to too close to closing time I gotta wait until they come back in the office and process the information but if I come in at noon buy the gun fill out all my information pass my background check they send the information they fax it down down downtown to the, the county I get access to my gun that day if I do early enough, the waiting period thing is only in, in our. It, it's based on timing. What if you run my name to a federal background check and it nothing comes through? Why am I waiting an extra two days for? Guys don't have to. That's what they say. The bad guys don't have to. They don't. But what I would also say to them too is like, okay, well, let's have another conversation about how guns get so in you, the wrong you, hands. You just drop, jump in from topic to topic. So you want to know why I don't want to wait because criminals don't have to wait. So now you want to know. This is where they blame red states or other states for the illegal guns that are already out there. What really is interesting to me, too, is that the people that are arming up live, a lot of them, live in some of the safest communities in America. And, and so you know that what they're arming... But you just said the number one safe, the number one people arming up are black women. And they don't live in the safest communities in the in anywhere. They live in the worst. So if you just, you just acknowledge that black women are late to the party and they're getting guns, finally. They're strapping up despite being very gun control. During the pandemic, I don't know how many chicks, sisters was like, why you got all that? Why you got this and that? But when that pandemic hit and it looked like them grocery stores, the freezer section was empty and only thing left with the store was that vegan shit, right? They was all panicking like, how do I get a shotgun? How do I get this? I'm like, you voted for all this shit. That's why you can't get a gun tomorrow. 
you gotta wait and deal with all this stuff and you can't go to Walmart and buy a gun shotgun no more because of the policies and the politicians that you vote for hashtag do it you saw that video in California with the gun store FFL dude telling people to chill the freak out this is a process it takes time it's not as easy as they make the argument on these um, podcasts or these news outlets that are biased against the second amendment it's not like that it's different there is a process to get a pistol from especially in blue states or get a, to get a weapon in general it's not just easy as going to a gun show quote unquote loophole and walking out with a the gun they're all there at my gun show the area county police and are right there and if you buy you can buy ammo you can buy parts but if you buy a, a you can buy a lower but if you buy a complete firearm they're checking your ID and they're checking what you bought before you leave you have to walk through them to get in and you have to walk through them to get out up against is a fear that they're being constantly fed all the time the fear of like when they're sitting there watching say Fox all day and every criminal that they are plastered on the screen looks like me or looks like my husband that's what they're seeing they're like oh. the problem with the argument though is like a lot of these you know, try this in a small town near you a lot of those folks that's out there rioting and protesting looting burning shit down are white people Kyle Rittenhouse shot three white people like the lady who blew up the what was that the Wendy's a cocktail Molotov or it's a white girl most of these people that are on the news being shown in these riots and protests are white people they're white liberals oh no one of these days these criminals black people are letting their white liberal friends come in their town and their city and blow and destroy shit while they go back to the suburbs and they can go to Walmart and they can go to CVS and get whatever they need but you can't your grandma can't go get her diabetes medicine because you burnt down the Walmart claiming it ain't our property, it ain't our buildings, but your family and your community uses those things. So there should be some pride in having access to those things. Because in Chicago, the Latinos was it. The Latinos did not let black folks come to their side of town to go to their Walmart and their CVS. Even the innocent people who didn't do shit, they just needed access to go to the store to get food and water and medicine. They were messing with them because they like, no, no, we don't care. You let them do that to y'all, but y'all gotta come to our community. Even though they don't, those Puerto Ricans don't own those stores either. Those Puerto Rican gangs that was out there protecting it, they don't own those stores either. But they understand the point of it being in the community, and they understand their grandmas and aunties with diabetes and high blood pressure want to go to Walmart and get their medicine when they need to get it. But that's a different conversation. They just gonna come up in my nice safe suburb and they gonna take everything. I'm like, do you know what happens to black people when we're in all white communities? As soon as they see us, they know where the fuck we are. Okay, you don't need to worry about us. But in their mind, this is like totally reasonable. And so I think a lot of it is that people, unfortunately, our politicians, our leadership, they have used this fear to create a cottage industry. And um, it's really sad. The fear goes on both ways, though, because you just said Tiki Torch White Boys, and that's the fear. And that's why black people are going, yeah, the right does that, and people do that on both sides. But you, the left does the exact same thing, and she even did it herself. She used the one example of Buffalo of why people are getting arms, not the hundreds of situations that happen every summer in Buffalo. Buffalo is the second largest city in the state of New York, and its crime per capita is worse than Chicago being that it's such a small city. The same shootings and killings and all that stuff happens. You saw there was the riot, the looting and stuff in the middle of a snowstorm. There was a bunch of, like that never happened my whole life. Like I used to wonder about that too. Like. Like, they should make a movie about that, on a side note, but there's, like, we've had some crazy-ass storms, and the one storm where it was the worst we've ever had, and people were dying, and all in their cars and shit, because they, you know, went outside in the middle of a storm, um, people wanted to loot and go steal shit in that situation, which, you know, but anyways, the left uses the same racial tension in the media, and they hype up the stories, Whenever there's a black dude involved in a mass, even though they're trying to slowly incorporate gang violence and killings into the mass shooting situation, generally when there's a black mass shooter, the, the news doesn't want to cover it. They don't talk about it. There's, <laughs> I'm going to say this in a couple of videos all over and over again every time I cover it. But no, black kids do not shoot up schools, but they will shoot up baby showers because there's no weddings in our community. Um, they will shoot up birthday parties and, and baby showers and funerals and graduation parties and 4th of July picnic they'll shoot up all that shit but no they won't shoot up schools right but again the media won't cover it when the black kid shoots up a graduation party and he kills six people that you saw that it wasn't on CNN it wasn't really I think Fox covered it a little bit it wasn't on MSNBC it wasn't on ABC and all that 
they glossed over it for one day and it was in the story again. Let it, a white man shooter come out there do something, plaster it on the moons. It's on TV for a month. They they use it as their um, wedge issue to try to get gun control pushed in, and it's a topic of discussion. But again, when the color of the shooter is different, the media doesn't really care. They just don't care. Yeah, because I think um, the part that is just really disappointing and really disheartening is that we have decided that we have more allegiance to these guns. And again, I'm not talking about taking everybody's guns. That's impossible. It's over 400 million guns in the United States. You're not going to be able to take them. But when you go outside of the United States and you're visiting other places and you see culturally just how they look at guns as being so different, it is the selfishness that we possess just generally as Americans being fed the constant diet of your freedom, you come first. It's like American exceptionalism, being fed all that shit your whole life. Of course, you would think it's totally worth it that I be able to purchase my AR-15 at this gun show in 10 minutes. Yep, that's worth about 10, 15 kids dying. Yep, that's worth it. It seems like it is. And that kind of thinking is going to ruin us. Unfortunately. Give the example of where that ever happened. Give the example of where someone went to a gun show, bought a gun in 10, 15 minutes. And, oh yeah, that reminds me, I gotta do a video about Patrick Bet David bitch ass doing some gun control conversations too. But show me the video or the news story where that specifically happened. All these situations, the person bought the gun legally, all these situations, the person did things to modif unmodify the gun, or they went somewhere else and um, bought a magazine, which they also broke the law doing that. Um, but these people were always flagged by the FBI, the school told parents, the parents were informed that this kid was doing some crazy shit, whether it was killing animals, whether it was making suicide notes, all these people had a paper trail of... A bunch of stuff where they should not have gotten a gun. Absolutely. The stuff that these the dudes did in Florida, the stuff that this kid did on his computer and told his teachers, all these things should have been quote unquote red flags, yet they still got cracked through the system or they stole their parents' gun out of their gun. Like they didn't the parent didn't give them access to it. They stole the gun from their parents. None of these situations are all oh, mothers go not do a background check, go get a gun from a gun show and then go shoot up a bunch of kids in the school. That hasn't happened. Most of these kids that have done this have gotten the guns either legally or they stole them. Yeah, I feel like that what eventually will happen is that we just gonna have we just gonna fuck around and find out. That's that's what that's the that's the option we've decided. Don't make shit better, just fuck around and find out. It was something interesting also that you said about the lack of platform, because that is something that's been a dramatic politically change. Like you can People go to the voting booth now to vote against somebody else. They don't really vote, go to vote something for themselves. They vote to make sure, oh, no, let me make sure you as a woman that you, <laughs> you do realize that you're paying taxes, all right, that you. The entire Trump administration, I mean, last election, was literally, we don't like Biden. You know, you don't vote for you ain't black. Uh, yelling at a bunch of black, so-called black leaders, telling them to get with the Mexicans because they the ones got the power to control. Um, not doing anything to address in his campaign to curtail mass incarceration none of that stuff most people who voted for him that are black because specifically were voting against trump they weren't voting for biden they were voting against trump and they voted for biden in the primaries just because they thought he was the only one that could beat trump so i don't get it again you can make this statement and say people in general but say specifically i'd respect if he says democrats and republicans are voting against things like, you're voting to get a Supreme Court justice that will take away guns and will... Um, she's saying that they're not going to come do it or whatever, but Beto O'Rourke, that's what he said he was going to do. Stacey Abrams, that's what she said she would have did. So you're saying that they won't do it and they can't do it, but they ran campaigns on the possibility of doing it. But anyways, I don't think she said anything much more worth discussing. It's just, I'm going to start doing more comment and reviews and retakes takes on these gun control arguments it's literally all the same shit being rehashed but you still got to cover it and you still got to um, respond to it I don't know what the comments are saying in this if they all agree or whatnot but we just heard from two fired former ESPN sports journalists former so-called news journalist which is just opinion piece person um, they were giving their take on guns and in typical fashion is a bunch of bullshit um i would love to get past the taxing of the bullets the, the limitations to 10 rounds the messing with S, the, the messing with you know stocks and i would love to get to the point where we can talk about training and education and gun safety and not necessarily mandating it but 
incentivizing it and incorporating it in the process of the Second Amendment so that we can be safer. Um, but we can't ever have those conversations because Democrats can't just go out and take the guns. They got to do all these other things to make it cross prohibitive, which affects black people and poor low income people as well. Um, and women who, like I said, the chicken buffalo, she had a bulletproof vest on, which she can no longer get now because our governor, because of the buffalo shooter, made it illegal to have her body armor, which doesn't hurt or kill anybody. It's a defense mechanism. But her logic is, no, you can't have it no more. But that's just the it. It didn't save her life still. But if he had a shotgun, if he had a pistol, which he couldn't get because he's a felon, and he's a former felon, so I don't even know how he got a shotgun. He was a criminal. He shouldn't have had sex to that either, but whatever. But yeah, he tried to kill his wife in the car. And she informed the authorities. She called the police. She did everything she was supposed to do. Went on social media, posted it for everybody to see how this dude was a dirtbag. And yet... She still lost her life, and the state did not protect her. Now, had she had the ability to have a gun and to have some training, she'd probably still be here. But she lives in New York, so that wasn't going to happen.